This video is for Austin at the Boys and Girls Club in Florida, but I figured this could be something that's useful for everyone. These are a quick five-ish tips on classroom management. So I wanna talk about two things here. I wanna talk about one, overall classroom management, and two, what do you do with that one kid, you know that one kid, that always kinda of does too much, goes too far pushes the envelope a little bit too much. And so I wanna talk about those really quickly. One, the importance of that to me is, I'm greeting you every day, shaking your hand, and then saying good morning to you, good afternoon to you, what's up, maybe I make fun of you, whatever it is. But one, the consistency of that wins because the kids see that you're, you're going to do the same thing every day. And two, it allows me to greet you with respect at my door. I have no rules in my classroom except give respect, get respect. That's my overarching rule. I don't waste my time giving kids 90 other rules because I assume that you weren't brought up by a pack of wolves. And that's not a slight to the kids that were brought up by a pack of wolves. I, I can appreciate that. Yes, it's kind of awesome. Greeting people at my door every single day lets you know that I see you, that I care about you, and that from the jump, I want you to know that you're important to me. Two, I mentioned this so sort of already, but consistency. And every single thing you do, you have to have consistency. If you tell a kid that this is the rule, that we don't talk when I'm talking, the first time you start talking while they're talking, you lost already. So if someone's talking, even that big dude that sits in the back corner of the room and mean mugs you, like he's gonna cut you if you try and talk to him, I don't care. I just pretend I'm strong and tough. Sometimes dudes are intimidating, especially when you're six foot seven and gigantic, and you look like you eat whole chickens at every meal. You're asking for it. The kids need to know that that sort of consistency, those procedures and policies are gonna be the same thing every day, and then it doesn't surprise someone. So if I say no cell phones in class and I see your cell phone in class, there's gonna be a repercussion for that. If you're talking when I'm talking, there's gonna be a repercussion for that. If you're talking while someone else is talking, if you use particular types of language, it has, there has to be that consistency where every single time, my friend Alex is always quoting Wu, What's that guy's name? He wrote that book, the teaching book. It's like the most famous teaching book ever. It says, you either put in the work now or you're gonna put in the work later. I'd rather put in the work on the front end so I don't have to deal with the bad behavior later. Now, real quick note on that. I wanna make sure that I'm clear and I wanna make sure you're not getting the wrong message. If you do mess up, you can always fix it. When someone tells you that the first day is the most important, that the first week is the most important, it is, but if you mess it up, you're not like ruined for life. You can fix that, just start being consistent now, and it might take a little bit longer, but you can always still win. Just because you didn't start the race strong, just because your team was down in the beginning of the game, doesn't mean your team doesn't win at the end. It's actually a much better story, because then you become the underdog, and you're like, the Rocky of teaching or something like that. Next, what do you do when that dude won't stop talking, won't stop messing around, doesn't wanna pay attention or doesn't wanna, is acting inappropriate? How do you handle that situation in the moment? Sometimes this is gonna depend on what kind of kid that is. So sometimes I will yell at a student if I know that it's effective with that student, but that comes with, with knowing your students and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Sometimes I'll just go over, gently put my hand on someone's shoulder and just ask them nicely. Not everyone wants a hand on their shoulder. Sometimes. I'll write a note on a post-it note. I'll walk over, I'll put that post-it note on someone's desk that says, hey, I need you to chill or make sure we're paying attention or you're doing a good job, stay on the path. But more often than not, if I think someone's being really belligerent, I'll walk over then I'll, and I'll whisper to them that I need you to step in the hallway real quick, that you're not in trouble, I just need to speak with you for a moment. If you tell a kid, get out, get in the hallway now, you're gonna get into a power struggle potentially with that student and you don't want that. I've got you for the rest of your natural born life. If you don't watch your step, you want another one? Yes. You got it. You got another one right there. That's another one, pal. You through? Not even close, bud. Good. You got one more right there. You really think I give a sh- Nicely asking them to step into the hallway wins almost every single time. Then when you're in the hallway, that conversation sounds like this. Hey man, here's the behavior that I'm noticing in class. I'm wondering if there's anything that I did that could have possibly upset you to make you do this. I just wanna make sure that I'm not in the wrong. And saying things like that to kids literally blows their minds because they're used to being pulled into the hallway and then getting the rundown on the rap sheet of like all the things they did wrong and why they can't do them and why they need to pay attention and why they need to respect you. And you're talking at a kid and you're blaming them. And instead, you're taking a moment to realize the fact that maybe you actually did something that was a bad move. Nine times out of 10, 
the, I did not do something, but every once in a while, you'll get a kid that's like, yeah, I didn't like the way you called on me or the fact that you didn't call on me or the fact that you picked five other people instead of me or that you make me sit in the back every day or you don't have a nickname for me or whatever it is. That's, that's a real thing, by the way, not giving kids nicknames. They get all crazy about that sometimes. And so if you did do something to hurt someone's feelings or upset them, you can then just apologize and mirror the sort of behavior that you want to see in the students. If you didn't do something wrong, this gives you an opportunity to address that behavior head on. And the way you do that is by saying, I want more than anything for you to do well in my class. I want you to be here, but I only want you to be here if you want to be here. And if you don't, then that's a different conversation we have to have with your folks. But I'm noticing this behavior and what I need you to do is be more like this. And then that conversation is you being cool about it, you not talking down to a kid, and you just removed their whole audience. No one else in the class is there for them to show off to, for them to like get a rise out of. And then when you walk back into the classroom, you can either let them in right away, you can send them to get a drink first or go to the bathroom. And then you say, but when you come back in here, I need you 100% cool, can we do that? And you'll almost always get compliance from a kid. And not every time the rate of compliance is going to go up. And I think that comes because you were cool, you treat that student like an adult, you showed respect to them and you took away the audience so they couldn't front and act like a fool when you were trying to talk to them. I think another way to win with students is to give kids jobs. Whether you believe in it or not, there's a lot of learning differences out there. You're dealing with kids that have a very hard time sitting still in a desk with their hands crossed quietly, eagerly waiting for your lesson to, to, to blossom and for them to like get a chance to like share what they know in the class. That's very hard and you have to build that culture, right? I think you can, you can get to something like that, but I think getting kids invested in the class, giving a kid a job that has a hard time sitting still and saying, hey, you're in charge of passing out papers. Can you come in every day and I wanna teach you how I want my whiteboard cleaned? Or maybe you're in charge of writing hall passes. Maybe you're in charge of handing out pencils or journals or organizing desks. What that's doing is it's giving kids ownership in a classroom where they are generally just a guest, right? Like you're in charge of this drawer of my desk. All things that are in there need to stay neat. So you're teaching kids how to pay attention to detail. You are responsible for this, so I need you to be on time so you can take care of this task every day. You're teaching kids to be on time. I need you to do it without messing around, so when handing out papers, you're not throwing things at people, you're not tossing to them across the room. I'm gonna show you how I need it done, and then I need you to do it that way, and if you can't, then it's not cool. Like, then you get, that job gets revoked, I will give it to someone else. And I've just found through experience that kids like jobs. They get, actually get, annoyed if you give someone else all the jobs like I how come I never get to clean the whiteboard if nothing else it gets something off your to-do list but then you're sharing that responsibility with students and you're treating them like adults and you're giving them something to do with that energy instead of saying just sit still shut up and sit and wait until someone talks to you and the last thing I want to say is building relationships is like one of the greatest things you could ever ever do for your students and that doesn't matter what kind of school you're from but taking the time to get to know your students so that they will behave better in class, they'll behave better in life, they'll deal with their own stuff in their head better. It doesn't just benefit you, it benefits the students, their families, the school, the community that you work in. It has seemingly endless benefits. And I'm gonna talk more about that. I'm gonna make a video companion to this about how I build relationships with students. But I wanted to mention it here because I have very few classroom management issues because I have such deep relationships with the students. And if you take the time to do that, no matter who you are or how introverted you are, how extroverted you are, how weird you are, how whatever your thing is, you can still do that with students every single time. And there it is. There's my five-ish tips on classroom management. Hey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that little bell thing up there because that little bell lets you know when more videos are coming out. If you know somebody that could use a quick video like this, make sure to share this with them. And if there's ever anything I can do, hit me up and I'd love to be able to help you with that. That's it, guys. Peace.